from the cash organization we have been given a 2 kb direct map cash with a block size of 64 bytes the system has a physical address space of 64 kb and a word length of 16 bits so let us note down these things we have the cash size given as 2 kilobytes which will be 2 to the power 11 bytes the block size is given as 64 bytes will be 2 to the power 6 bytes and the physical address space or we can say the main memory size is given as 64 kb which will be 2 to the power 16 bytes now what can we infer from this since the block size is 64 bytes or 2 to the power 6 bytes which means the block offset will be taking 6 bytes this is the block offset here we have the lines and then we have the tag and since the main memory size is 64 kb the address would be 16 bits long so this entire is 16 bits out of which block offset is taking 6 bits now what will be the lines be taking for that we will be calculating the number of lines which is given by cache size upon block size or 2 to the power 11 upon 2 to the power 6 which is 2 to the power 5 so there are 2 to the power 5 or 32 lines in it hence this lines will be taking 5 bits and out of the 16 what is left 6 plus 5 11 so 5 is left that will constitute the tag bits so this is how the address would be distributed and now what they have given is we have four data words p q r and s they are accessed in that same order 10 times means one after the after repeatedly they are being accessed p q r s p q r s and so on so in total there are 40 such accesses to the data cache assume that the data cache is initially empty and no other words are accessed by the program so their addresses have been given p q r and s these addresses given as these represent the hexadecimal addresses a248 for q it is c28a ca8a a, and at the last a262 for the execution of the above program which of the following statements is or are true with respect to the data cache so we know that the address is 16 bits long it is given in hexadecimal so let us first convert it to this required representation in the form of tags lines and uh, block offset so this a to 4 it will be converting each of them into four bits so for 8 will become 10 which is 1010 2 it will be 0010 then 4 0100 finally 8 1000 in the same way for this c is 12 so 1100 then 200108100 and a is again 1010 for r it is c means 1100 a is 10 1010 8 and 100 and then a is again 1010 now for the last one a 1010 0010 6 will be 0110 and at the end 0010 so these are the 16 bit addresses that we got we'll now be breaking down these addresses into 5 5 and 6 bits each representing the tags lines and offset respectively so these first 5 bits are the tags in all of them now the next 5 bits will be representing the lines so that is this 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 similarly in this and now the remaining portion represents the block offset so that will be the last 6 bits so 1 2 3 4 5 6 the last 6 6 and 6 okay so now we can see that if we check for p and s what do we see in common they are having the tag bits as 10100 and 10100 so the tag bits are same now if we check for the lines it is 
zero zero one again zero one zero zero one. So their lines are also same. So what does this mean? The block offset is different. Since their tag bits and the lines are same, it suggests us that P and S are referring to the same memory block. So whether we say P or whether we say S, it is the same thing we are referring to. Hence, if we are accessing the memory repeatedly, let us say we are accessing them in the order PQRS, PQRS, and so on. So the first time when P will be accessed, it will be a miss because it is not already present. After that, when Q R N are done, then S will arrive, and the block to which it is referring at that place P is already present, and hence this will be a hit actually instead of a miss because they are referring to the same thing. Next time when P comes, it will be a hit. When S comes, it will be a hit. So what will actually happen here is once in that empty block, this first P will be occupied, and after that, all the references to this P and S will be A hit, so this P will not be executed or you can say extracted from that particular memory location. It will be staying there, and S will not get inserted into that cache block. Hence, the first statement, which is every access to S is a hit, that is true, just because P and S are having same tag and the line bits. Then next is once P is brought to the cache, it is never evicted. This is also true because all the references to P and S later on become a hit. So P is never evicted from the cache. Now let us have a look at Q and R. For them, the tag bits are one one zero 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 and one one zero zero one. So it is different. But when we check their lines, it is zero one zero one zero, which is same for both. So this Q and R are actually competing for the same cache block, which means for the first time when we access Q, that will be entered into the cache. Then when we access R, it is referring to the block which is being occupied by Q. So what R will do is this Q was a miss. R will also be a miss, and what this R will do, it will take out or evict that Q from that location and occupy that place. So basically, R is replacing Q, and the same thing will happen. So at the end, what the third statement is saying, at the end of the execution, only R and S will be residing in the cache. This is true because S is never inserted, P is there. So P will be residing in the cache. So S is residing. That is false. P will be residing among P and S, and among Q and R, what will happen? First Q was inserted, then R replaced it. Then in the next cycle, again Q will be inserted, R will be replacing it. So the same thing will keep on happening. That is incorrect. At the end, what we will be having P and R in the memory because P was already there, and among Q and R, R is coming after Q. So that will be the one which will be staying at the end. Every access to R evicts Q from the cache. This is also true. So the correct options we got are A, B, and D.